Today we're launching this episode a little bit early. We want to uh, put this out in time for Father's Day. Today is uh, uh, Father's Day for 2014. And uh, as one dad to other dads out there, I want to say thank you for being a dad. We get posed with the question sometimes, what does it take to be a dad? Because just because you can procreate makes you a parent, but it doesn't make you a dad. A dad is something totally different from somebody that's just genetically able to produce children. I want to talk to you about being a dad. In the Bible, there's really not a whole lot of information about how to be a good dad. There's one scripture that I found just at random in uh, Ephesians chapter 6. It talks about children, uh, verse 1, children obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise uh, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Uh, As Bill Cosby used to say that his parents would tell him, I brought you into this world, I'll take you out. So we honor our parents, but it it goes on and gives us one little clip about a father. And it says, And you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. It almost sounds like right there, dads are kind of prone to get under the kid's skin. It, It almost sounds like dads are just not really great people. And fortunately, if you if you watch television, look at sitcoms, dads are portrayed as mean, overbearing, or, or stupid. That's not what a real dad is. A dad is a good man. Much of what we know about fatherhood isn't so much in the Bible saying, do this and you'll be a good dad, as much as it is, watch the Heavenly Father. Look at how the Heavenly Father acts and dads treat your children as God treats you, because we are God's children. And, uh, and, you know, what does it take to be a dad? There's a guy by the name of Ron Rose wrote a thing called Dad's Diary, 30 Days to Being a a Better Dad. And uh, there's one little part in here that I really like because it was called Preparing for a Test. Dads, let me, if you're a dad, you're watching this, see if this kind of bears reflection with you. Uh, Ron Rose says this, To become a certified public accountant, you have to pass an exam. To become a doctor, an attorney, a journeyman welder, a contractor, a postman, or an engineer, you have to pass a test. We test for mastery of skills and knowledge of details before we let a pilot fly, but there's no test for us to take before we become dads. I'm not sure what a fathering test would look like, but I know a few things that would help you prepare for the test. If you know how the fo- if you know the following things, you will be do well on your way becoming a su- successful father. As a father, you should know when to say you're sorry, how to lose gracefully, how to tie a Christmas tree to the roof of your car, how to put your foot down without stepping on toes, how to make a wrong turn into a shortcut, how to laugh in the middle of a problem, how to change a tire the punchlines of a few good jokes, how to win without rubbing it in, that that women don't always know the whereabouts of your lost keys, how to cook one good meal on a Coleman stove, how to set up a tent, how to fold a map, the art of carving a turkey, how to cook a decent meal without the microwave, which day is a double coupon day at which grocery store? (laughs) There's a lot of dads wouldn't know that today. That it's okay to admit you were wrong at least once. How to control your tongue in front of your in-laws. How to retell 10 Bible stories to your kids. That your children need to see you being affectionate with their mother. That sometimes your wife wants you to listen without trying to solve her problem. That it's okay for men to change their minds too. That just about the time you think you know what you're doing, your children leave. The real test for becoming a father can't be put on paper. It's not a multiple choice test of your knowledge. It's on the job training. You can know all the right answers, read all the books, watch all the videos, belong to all the right groups, but if your lifestyle doesn't change with each child, you flunk the test. Children affect our schedules, our ambitions, our leisure activities, our relationship with God, and our plans for the future. 
How has fatherhood affected your life? You know, as one of the greatest moments of my life, you know, there's, there's several that kind of highlight things along the way. But what really stands out to me is the day my children were born. The day I married their mother, I married my best friend, and then my kids were born after. My oldest son, uh, I was, he was the only one I was able to, to watch uh, give birth. Uh, the uh, second one, uh, she, my daughter, her and her mother almost died in childbirth. My third one was a result of a car crash. Uh, he was born two months premature, weighed four pounds, could just fit in the palm of my hand. And uh, very, you might say traumatic, but at the same time, my children are the joy of my life. I love my kids. I want my kids to not only watch this video, but I want this, I want my kids to watch me because I want to set for them a good example of what a, a good dad is. They'll see plenty of reasons of what dad didn't do good. They'll see things that dad really blew it there. And they need to see those too because their children need to see that we're human. They need to see that we don't have all the answers, but they also need to see that we know who does, that we can go to God, that they can follow us as we follow our Heavenly Father, and that my sons can one day be good dads, my daughter can be a good mom. We don't always know what it takes to be a good dad. And I'll tell you, if I could just kind of put a little something in there, there's kids out there, even in your church, you go to church, they live in your neighborhood, they go to school with your kids, they don't have a dad at home. They don't have a dad that can do all those things to teach them how to change a tire, throw a fastball, how to tie a tie, if you even remember how to tie a tie. They, they don't know these things and they don't have a dad to tell them. There's some things mom just can't do. They need a dad. Be a dad to those that don't have a dad. God gave us children for a reason. And it's to train them up in the right way. We're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. And like, like it said, once you, once you got it all down right, you become a grandparent. And they're all gone. And then when you become a grandparent, I've, I've heard, I've never experienced it, but I've heard it's a whole nother thing. Then you kind of throw the rules out the window and do what you want to do because you want to spoil them rotten. Be a good parent. If you have a parent still alive, your dad is alive, you need to call him. You need to talk to him. You need to tell your dad that you love him, that you're never too old to look your dad in the eye and say, Dad, I love you. Even if you've never heard your dad say it to you, he needs to hear it from you. If you haven't talked to your dad in a while, maybe you need to find out what it is that's causing the, the friction and do what you can to fix it. Is your dad gone? Then find a dad. You'll see him. They're the guys that are standing by the phone wishing their kids would call. They're the ones standing by the mailbox wishing the kid would send them a card. Find, find a dad that doesn't have their kids with them today. And you're a kid who doesn't have their dad with them. Celebrate it together. And the best place to celebrate it is in the Lord's house. Celebrating Father's Day in the Father's house with the Father. I pray you have a great week. Dad, you're not going to get it always right, and that's okay. There's a lot of times at church, well, Mother's Day, we give Mom the, the roses, and on Father's Day, we give Dad the thorns, and that's not good. Dad, you're valuable. What you do matters. Your influence makes a difference. You shape a culture in a generation by what you do and by what you don't do. So do it well. Be a good dad. Even if your kids don't live with you and you only get to see them every now and then, be the best dad. Don't be their best friend. They don't need you to be their best friend. They need you to be their dad. They need you to be their father. May not be popular, may not be fun, that's okay. Be their dad. Because I'm telling you, in the moment, and what they think and feel isn't what matters. It's down the road in their life when they'll look back and say, 
I'm glad my dad stood his ground here. Don't drive your kids to wrath, but do what the Bible says. Teach your children to love and honor the Heavenly Father, just as you would want to be loved and honored as the Earthly Father. God bless you. I pray all of you have a, have a great week. To all the dads, happy Father's Day. I appreciate you guys. Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Be the best dad that you possibly can.